Okay, today we're going to give you a quick rundown of a Mitsubishi SST gearbox. Uh, we rebuild these and upgrade them to, to certain vehicle power that's uh, needed. What we'll have at the moment, we've got the gearbox sitting on the side, and just for the demonstration, I guess we've taken all the bolts out already, so we'll be able to give you a quick rundown of how it all operates, what particular parts do, and what things can go wrong with it. Um, at the moment, okay. So this would normally be the front of the car. The sump would be covering the gearbox. Obviously it's coated in oil. And this will be where your plug goes in to the gearbox and controls all the information. So what we'll do now, we just pull this valve body out. So we can place it over here and we'll talk about that later on. Okay, now with this gearbox, it came in with a shift fork error code. Which, break, which means that uh, it's had issues selecting and it's lost fourth and second and fourth gear. Um, a quick little way that, that we can sort of get an idea of what it is before sort of pulling it apart. We can put the screwdriver in there and we can see that the, the fork is actually wobbling around, which will cause um, the information not being correct in the gearbox and uh, being locked out of gears which it has been with this gearbox. So what we're going to have to do now is pull this gearbox apart, see, the, repair the, the shift fork, see if you have any issues with it. As you can see also as well with this gearbox, the oil services weren't done on a regular basis. Um, they're a dark brown colour. Um, it's also seen a lot of heat. Uh, as a, this oil is a, a light green colour normally, and that's definitely not like that. So it hasn't had, it's been, Service intervals as what one would want to keep uh, to prolong these gearboxes' life. Okay, now we've got the, the cover off the gearbox, and now we can give you a quick rundown of what it looks like on the inside. Uh, we have several shift forks inside this gearbox that uh, will be, I suppose, selecting the gears and situation that's needed through oil pressure. We have one here, one here, and one tucked on the inside there, your main ones. Um, as you will notice with this one here, this is tends to, this is always the problem one. You can see it's wobbling around on this little mount there. Um, we've also had issues where this one has also loosened up and come off as well. Now overall, these gearboxes are pretty pretty tough. We've been what they are. They've got some good gear in them, solid gear in them. They're a nice six speed once they're operating correctly. Um, with the oil. Now, oil works in this gearbox, this is the sump area here. This is your main internal filter. The oil would be sucked up through there into the pump. From the pump, it will go into the valve body, and then the valve body will allocate to all the areas uh, where the oil pressures need to be sent to to coordinate the gear changes and the clutch pressures in this gearbox once it's working. Now, when things do get dirty, as clutches do wear inside this gearbox, you will get obviously leftover material. And you'll find now the main areas of receiving the, the area there, the metal particles, are these magnets which are based on the bottom of the internal filter. Now, what happens is once obviously once it all wears, you will start getting picking up a lot of this uh, dirt or these particles on here, which are very dirty and you don't want those going for obviously for your gearbox. Um, and now with no non-regular gear, I suppose gear oil changes, you'll find that the solenoids inside these valve bodies will can tend to stick and due to being get, due to getting dirty and will cause other issues as well. Uh, we also have another magnet here in the main compartment of the gearbox which also is there for the purpose of collecting uh, the metal particles so they build up and come off the gears just through general wear and tear uh, they will be collected in those areas uh, that's very important with these, with these cars to have regular gearbox oil changes because uh, it helps with the valve body and the overall operating of these gearboxes Okay, next one down what we'll do is we'll go through the, the clutch compartment area. So basically what happens is with the gearbox we take the clutch cover off which allows us to get to the, the clutch area. Now 
Now once the, the clutch and stuff we are taken out of the gearbox, we have a, what they call a torque dampener. Inside this torque dampener is a, a range of springs on each side, which absorbs the shock when the, the clutches have got uh, clamping pressure on them from the fluid. And it probably works as a principle as the older style the clutches with a clutch plate with the springs in it, it absorbs the shock once uh, you'll find the clutches are engaged. There are two styles of this one, there's a newer and an older style, uh, but they basically have the same springs on the inside, it's a slightly revised version of the outer, outer spring clip. And they do tend to break, and we can rebuild those without having to buy new ones, OEM. Um, we've got a technique of making sure the springs are old, Compartment is pulled apart and then we're going to reset the springs and put them in and they've been proven in a lot of our cars with no issues. Now the next part, once we have that off, we're able to get into the clutch area. Now we have, there are clutch, two clutch baskets, the small and the large, which go over the, the respective clutch plates. With these, once these come off, they're just the housings that locate them into the clutch basket, the, the main outer one. Once we get into there, we have our clutch hub. And on our clutch hub, this is where our clutch plates are located for odd and even gears. We have odd and even. So basically, once one's engaged, one's, one's not engaged, and vice versa, it just keeps on switching, which allows fast changes. And all good. as long as it's all going well, with no slippage, you have a very fast car. Now, with the clutch plates, these are what's on there. So we have frictions and steels. Uh, these are stock OEM type ones. So basically what's happened is this gearbox has, has a, had regular oil changes and the clutches have been slipping. Now what happens is here, the once the, the metal starts to smart mark up from slipping, it hasn't had too much heat uh, in these ones. You would see that with blue marking and which we haven't got on this. So they're basically a very, just a worn set of clutches, uh, the steel. So these will have to be replaced with a new, new set. So as you can see, that's the larger set. This is the smaller set. And they've both received the same amount of problems with uh, general wear and tear, you could say, without really being overheated. So, so they all need to be replaced. We do have some examples here of some or more extreme cases where we get hot spots on clutches from where they've been uh, over spun up and they do slip. Here's another one as well where they do receive a lot more heat. You can find the blue spots here as they are. Uh, okay, these are aftermarket type brand ones. Uh, we have a few of those here. Here's another one. It's received a lot of heat. Once they go like that, basically you might as well just chuck them away. They can't be used so. Um, they start to warp, they aren't flat anymore, and yes, your clutches are toast by that stage. Now what we do is also, there's clutch, there's your seals, top and bottom. Now with these seals, they obviously hold the pressure in and clamp up the plates. Once again, these are stock OEM, uh, Mitsubishi, I suppose, are produced for Getrag, and you have a set for the top, and a set for the bottom, not plates and bottom clutches. Uh, we re they, they do get replaced and you can get a higher option Viton uh, rubber style seal which is better for higher operating temperatures more for top circuit type cars that will receive more continuous heat now also here we also have uh, when it comes to the filter this is your, what you'll find is your external filter it's the full trans German type brands we always use the original type um, we don't seem to prefer the cheaper ones that are out there on the market. You can see the general ones are, tend to be of a lot better quality. That's worth paying the extra price for better filtration. And what we have here too, we have a shift fork. This is out of another gearbox. This is generally what happens to them. Uh, this is a shift fork like the four, number four. This one's been previously tried to be repaired by somebody else, but basically the principles are the same with them, uh, whether it's factory or aftermarket. Um, the glue will tend to come off, which therefore wobbles, it gets shifts like the problems, eventually will come off, come off, and then you have no gears at all. Uh, this is sort of a, an attempt of a repair job, but there is the, 
fair job that we do on these and upgrade is uh, a lot more um, stronger than what this attempt has been done. But generally that's what happens with them. When you do get them, you really get them popped because it's a, a big uh, job to actually get inside the gearbox and repair them. Okay, now once that's done, obviously now we move over to the, the valve body sort of side of things. Now there are two types of valve bodies in this car. The, that came out, there was an early version and a later version. Now the early version, you'll find, this is the outside casings of them, will have springs on them. So there's one spring here and one spring here. Now they came out in the early years, probably 2008, 2009. And you'll find um, they got replaced eventually with a, with a revised version where they've just gone and upgraded the casting and deleted the springs out of it completely so you'll find that there's, they're non-existent so that was an up, I suppose a revised, that's what they've done to them otherwise generally they're pretty much the same valve body um, that's the main difference but in saying that we've had lots of gearboxes run, running successfully still with this as well um, another little, little small little issue with these is that in their clutch cool, cooling valve ball plug which you'll find is that one here they tend to snap off they, they're in by you could show you the little clip they're held in by which, which locks these into place like that inside that area there and what happens is they'll eventually loosen up and crack and then they'll, they'll half hang out of the valve body uh, causing you issues with the valve body so what happens is we replace all those with our own billet ones um, and they'll have a, a bigger size as well which uh, you'll find will never come back out again and you can, you can also replace um, the, other, the other plugs in there too just for peace of mind um, with the valve body there's not too much you can do to them there are a couple of little tweaks you could probably do for pressure but overall the cars that are sort of they're designed for not many people have and there's no need to, to generally do it, but these these are a good unit once if you keep the, the oil clean and uh, the maintenance on them. The, the the rear half of the valve body is basically this. So that this this plate here, that plate will go sandwich on top of that gasket. And you'll find this is all your, your solenoids in here, which are required for changing gears, switching clutch baskets, controlling cooling and controlling pressures and of course the over pressures so what you'll find that's the sensors there to receive where the magnets are located inside the gearbox and that's your main wiring harness that will come in from the the car all these gearboxes once they've been reinstalled they generally they all need a Mitsubishi mud tool so you can have them recalibrated and working back to the factory settings and the appropriate tuning for what particular cuts you also install into your car. We, we do a lot with the Southside Performance SSP clutches. We have a full full range of uh, clutches, basically varying from 10, 12 and 14 plate. We can also make a 16 plate clutch, a uh, custom one. But overall, uh, yes, if you have any problems with any of your clutches, please do not hesitate to contact RP Customs and we can make a, a package to suit your needs and budget. Thank you.